So, binuksan ko yung top notcher list. Tapos, nandun yung pangalan. Kasi umiyak ako. Oh. Kasi parang lahat ng pagod. Yung nights na akala ko na hindi sufficient. Dahil nga working student. So, may times na feeling ko talaga na baka hindi sapat yung preparations na nagawa ko. Pero alam mo yun, after six months of continuously studying, as in every night, hindi naman every night, pero halos every night, parang, ayun, bumagsak yung luwa. Iyak ako. Hi, I'm engineer Sabella Martinez. I'm a graduate of Kyoto University for both my undergrad and my master's. And I recently placed 10th in the November 2024 Civil Engineering Licensure Examination while being a full-time working student. So I moved to uh, Japan um, in 2016 for my undergrad in Kyoto University. So it's an international course program. Everything's in English. And yeah, so I got my degree in 2020. And then I continued on to my master's in 2020 also during the pandemic. And then I graduated 2022. And that's when I received my master's in engineering and civil engineering. Mm -hmm. When I was in my second year of master's, my professor asked me if I wanted to continue to PhD. Sabi ko na ayo ko na research for now. Sabi ko maybe in the future I'll take a PhD again. But then at this time I want to see the actual construction in the field. So I asked him, sabi niya, ano yung kind of projects that you want to work on? And then I said, I really want to work on projects in the Philippines. Alam ko naman na babalik ako eventually dito sa Pilipinas after studying abroad. Tapos, naisip ko na since the only way naman to be able to sign mga plans dito, ba, is if you have a license here in the Philippines. And so I knew na eventually I'd have to take the board exam. So he was the one who kind of introduced me to my company. He said, why don't you apply to this company? And he was the one who connected me. So that's when I entered the company that I'm working with now. So last April or May, that was when my company told me that we have a possible project in the Philippines and if ever we would want you know, to, for you to get experience there in our project site. So I said, na, okay, sayang naman yung opportunity na to. I'll take this opportunity of being in the Philippines, in Manila. Na I'll take the board exam na, if possible, but it wasn't really my priority. It was more of, uh, I'll focus on work, but if kaya, I'll just start preparing for it na if kaya ko mag-exam, then mag exam ako. Actually, until September last year, hindi pa ako sigurado kung mag exam ako. Kasi I just, I started to preparing for it, but then it was like I wasn't pressuring myself na kailangan ko i-take this November. It was more of kung kaya ko, gagawin ko. Pero kung hindi, wag na natin ipilit. Next year na lang, parang ganon. So when I was preparing for the board exam, I asked around my friends here in the Philippines, Na san kayo nag review but then when I looked at the review schools that they went to, I couldn't find any programs that would fit the study style that I wanted because they well they did have online classes. Most of those online classes were still synchronous classes, which I guess would cater to the people that are living outside of Manila, diba? that's advantageous to them. But it did not fit what I needed as a full-time working student. I just needed something that was accessible to me 24-7. I could study anytime. So that's when I found Kipap, because I researched ano ba yung, parang ganito yung style of teaching nila. Um, Kipap also very active on social media. So <laughs> nakikita ko siya, may mga memes, diba? mga civil engineering memes. Nakikita ko siya on Facebook. Tapos I asked my friend then, na, have you heard about Kipap? Kasi syempre wala din ako masyadong alam um, with the review schools here. And then my friend said, yeah, because the instructors are also mga top notchers, like recent top notchers, and they're very young, pa, so they know about the recent trends. So that was when I enrolled. Actually, third week of May, nag enroll na ako sa Kipap. Sabi ko si Gabe magreview na ako for the boards here in uh, in the Philippines. Para in preparation ng if in case I would if I decided to take na this November or you know just just to prepare. I did not really look for other resources na hindi na ako naghanap. I think sufficient na yung na-provide ng Kipap. Um, it was also the way the lessons were uploaded. They were all available na, pero I mean, there were the videos, the quizzes, tapos there was the refresher pa, the weekly evaluation. I think they were really sufficient na with getting to know the topics that are covered in the board exam. Online naman lahat, so it didn't really matter where I was. It was still the same. Um, when I was in Japan, same as when I was here already in the Philippines, I would just uh, watch the videos at night uh, when I got off from work. I would go home, tapos eat dinner, and then watch the videos. 
It was the same lang when I was in Japan and when I was already here in the Philippines. Daily schedule, um, I would just go to work. So my work starts at 7, so I would finish around 5. And then I would go home, kakain. 7 p.m. siguro mga 7.30, that's when I would start studying again. And then matutulog ako ng 10. So mga 3 hours, I would average 3 hours per day. And then I would just maximize the videos. Parang... Ano din ako, alam mo yung mga videos na may mga yung side by side na may Minecraft na <laughs> ganon. <laughs> hindi hindi naman gawa ganon pero tinut parang 1.5 times ko kasi kailangan maano yung attention span. Ah. Alam mo yun parang para maka focus ako kailangan mas 1.5 times. Yes, oh speed. Hindi naman yung, yung, yung Minecraft. <laughs> yung may tumatalo ng talon. <laughs> hindi naman. Ah. Pero naka 1.5 times yun kasi I find na yun yung pinaka nagsusuit dun sa attention span ko na kailangan mabilis. Kasi pag masyado mabagal, parang may time ako to distract myself, alam mo yun. Pag weekend, actually, nung mga una, first few weeks, wala. I wouldn't study on weekends. Pero nung mga palapit na, pati weekends, Saturdays, na I, I also have work on some Saturdays. So, the free Saturdays that I have, or yung, pati yung Sundays, nag-aaral na ako nung medyo palapit na. Siguro yung mga September, October. Mainly, sep yeah, around September, October, pati weekends, nag-aaral na ako. Pero nung mga June, July, no, mga week, weeknights only, I study. Pero other days, I take my time off. So, kumusta yung actual board exam experience mo? Nakakapagod siya. <laughs> so, nakakapagod kasi... Even if you study, I think it's really the number of items that you have to answer within the five hours that you're given. 75 items in five hours, ang hirap nun. Sumakit yung likod ko. Kasi, syempre, sunod-sunod yun, di ba? Kailangan mo tuloy-tuloy sagutin. Tapos yung mga hindi mo nasagot, babalikan mo. So, yung for me, yung five hours na maximize ko talaga. As in, sagad na ako. Ako yung mga, alam mo yung mga huling lumalabas. Usually, ganun ako. Kasi minamaximize ko talaga yung oras. So, the exam itself, I would say, yung pinakamahirap talaga would be time management. Kasi the questions, if you're able to review well naman, the questions are similar to what you would see in the review. It's really more of time management na ganito karami. And then you have to keep track na, kunwari, naka two hours na, naka three hours, ilan na yung nasagot mo, kailangan na sa kalahati ka na, parang ganun. Tapos, I think that was also a good it was an advantage for me then na nakatulong siguro with my score kasi wala akong random na shined. All of them parang at least, you know, smart guess. Mm. Hindi siya yung parang parang sige hindi ko wala na akong oras kung ano na lang i-shade ko ABC ano yung choose C dati na kung hindi mo alam just choose C. Ayun tip ko pala for that would be to skip the uh, the questions na hindi mo alam kung paano sagutan kasi sayang sa oras. So, pag hindi mo kaya sagutan, go to the next question na, see the ones that you can answer. And then, it also gives you confidence. Nakaka-boost ng confidence pag alam mo kasi paano sagutan, ba? Pero pag hindi mo alam paano sagutan, tapos natagalan ka doon, parang nakaka-down siya. My goal talaga was just to pass. Kasi yung inisip ko, sayang naman yung in-review ko. Yun nga, until September or October, hindi pa ako sigurado kung mag -e exam ako. So, Nung nag-take nga ako ng exam, yung expectation ko lang naman ay sana pumasa na ako kasi sayang yung pinag-aralan ko. Sayang yung, alam mo yung every night ka nag-aaral, yung mga Saturday, Sunday mo na pwede ka sanang lumabas pero ginamit mo yung oras para mag-aral. Parang ayoko na ulitin. So yung focus ko talaga ay pumasa lang. So nung lumabas yung results, 3 a.m. pa talaga lumabas. Gising ka nun? Hindi. <laughs> talaga ako. <laughs> Tapos pero parang nag notif yung phone ko, uh -huh. nagpa-vibrate. Binuksan ko, doon lang ako sa M, letter M, nakafocus. Doon sa mga mirror sites pa. <laughs> kasi hindi naglo-load yung website kasi syempre ang daming malaki yung traffic, ba? So, pumunta ako sa M, tapos nakita ko yung pangalan ko. Tapos, parang, yay, pasado na ako. Parang pagod pa kasi 3 a.m. noon. Tapos saka ako nag-open ng notifs. Binasa ko yung messages na top notcher, top notcher. <laughs> So, hindi pa hindi pa ako na diwala. Syempre para wala kung kung scammer kayo parang kinuloko niyo ako. So binuksan ko yung top notcher list tapos nanon yung pangalan kasi umiyak ako kasi parang lahat ng 
pagod. Noong nights na akala ko na hindi sufficient dahil nga working student. So may times na feeling ko talaga na baka hindi sapat yung preparations na nagawa ko. Pero alam mo yun, after six months of continuously studying, as in every night, hindi naman every night, pero halos every night, parang, ayun, bumagsak yung luwa. Iyak ako. Sinina ako nakatulog after nun. So the next day, kasi may work pa ako, sobrang, ayun, wala ako sa sarili kasi naantok pa ako. This is what I always say pag when I'm asked na sa tingin mo ano yung nakatulong sa iyo sa pagre-review I think it was how I managed the lessons kasi the topics I went through them four times I think na ano ka na rin yun sa schedule yeah I went through it four times all of the topics not super detailed every time pero for example my first cycle I call it the four cycles the first cycle was when I was watching the videos and then answering the quizzes so yung time na yon nagtitik ako ng notes um, sa ako for sa iPad kasi pwede naman sa notebook then for me I was using my iPad so habang nag nanonood ng videos at nag-aanswer ng quizzes I would take down notes so yun yung first cycle yung second cycle ko using those notes gumawa ako ng note cards tapos nagrefer nagrefer din ako dun sa mga note cards na available from the instructors um, yun sa yon mm-hmm. at saka kay kanina yung may logo logo ay si king ah oh, ayon ang ganda ng penmanship niya <laughs> so ginamit ko yon tapos ginamit ko yung notes ko at saka yung note cards niya um, at saka yun sa yon den kasi available sa YouTube den yun uh. ba yun yung mga ginamit ko para magsulat ng note cards. So, yun yung second cycle ko. Kasi, from the start mo uulitin, gagawin mo yung note cards eh. So, second cycle yun. Yung third, yung weekly evals na dapat weekly sinasagutan. Hindi ko sinagutan weekly. Ginawa ko siya after ko nagawin yung note cards. So, after no note cards, yun yung parang naging basis ko na sinubukan ko sagutan yung mga weekly evals just based on the note cards that I prepared. So that's my third cycle. Tapos yung fourth cycle kasi nag refresher. Um, so refresher was an entire program on its own, de ba? So that was my fourth cycle. So yun yung four cycles ko. Sure, yung iba um, yung final coaching meron pa. Pero yun yung four na main talaga na ulit. So I would advise na try to cover na pagayon para repetitive cycle. What they call it spiral, de ba? More on spiral teaching, sha. So by doing that, yung para spiral, parang nare-refresh ka. Tapos hindi mo nakakalimutan yung mga dati mong pinag-aralan. Tapos other than that, I think consistency, but also be forgiving sa sarili mo. Kasi may mga days na pagod ka talaga as a working student. As in, um, may mga days na parang Siyempre, whole day ka na nagtatrabaho, ayaw mo na mag-aral sa gabi. So, be forgiving then na those days, wala ka na yun maa-absorb eh. So, if you're not able, to, if wala ka sa mood mag-aral, don't push yourself kasi wala ka din maa-absorb talaga. Kung wala ka sa mood mag-aral, wala kang maa-absorb, wala kang, there's nothing that can come out of it, di ba? So, pag ganun, yung mga days na feeling mo kaya mo mag-aral, dun ka mag-push. Kasi i-push mo na, um, Sigur, kaya ko today mag-4 hours na study or 5 hours. As much as you can, mag-ano na kayo, front load. Para those days na hindi mo na kaya, just be forgiving and take your time. I did it in order naman. Kasi MSTE, HGE, pesad yung order sa K-pop. Ginawa ko siya, pero I mean, cycles. Yung first cycle ko was just the videos. So, MST, all MSTE videos first, and then all HGE videos, and then all PESAD videos. By cycle, I mean, nadaanan yung topics. So, my first one was papanoorin yung videos, tapos sasagutan yung quizzes, and then magsusulat ng notes. So, nadaanan ko siya one time. Yung second time na nadaanan ko was when I was using my notes to write the note cards. So, Bale, hindi ko pinanood yung videos ole, pero nadaanan ko yung topics ole in a different style. Baka wala ding benefit if you watch the video several times. Siyempre, just to absorb, pero try approaching the topic through another way. So like, by watching the videos, that's one way. The second would be to write the note cards so naaalala mo yung mga formulas. Tapos the third would be answering yung mga quizzes na specific dun sa subject na yon that's your third so that's three different styles pero you're approaching it in a cycle so hindi mo nakakalimutan yung mga pinag-aralan mo na previously 
So, sana nakatulong yung mga sinabi ko. That's my advice for the working students here and also for others na who might find this helpful, not really just the working students. So once again, I'm Isabella Martinez, top 10 of the November 2024 Civil Engineering Licensure Examination while being a full-time working student.